Greetings, everyone. In our Women in Mobility series, we have a very special guest today, Ms. Padmaja Ayar, Senior Vice President, Business Division, Cross-Domain Computing at Robert Bosch Engineering and Business Solutions. Padmaja, it is a delight to have you as part of our Women in Mobility series, where we speak to business leaders like you to understand your leadership journey. Welcome. So we'll start off with, uh, Padmaja, your views on the current mobility ecosystem. Where do you think we are headed? <laughs> I think right now, uh, the I don't know where we are headed, but right now I think we are horribly disrupted. That's what I will tell you as a part of mobility. Technology is the key disruptor, I suppose. Yeah, that is a big, big disruptor. And then we have business models and these two then leading to an entire disruption in the talent world, I suppose. What we have and what we need has never ever been so distant mm -hmm. uh, as I have seen it, right? And uh, uh, so this is how we, we are seeing it and technology will go ahead and disrupt us further. Sure. Yeah, what I, what, I, what I like about the whole thing is that, that when you're so horribly disrupted, there are two ways to go about it, right? Uh, you can either sit and mope about it or you can fight back. What I like is that that we in mobility are fighting back and fighting like hell. So that's what I say about uh, the entire mobility ecosystem that's busy fighting a battle of its life, I think. Wonderful, fighting a battle of its life. Uh, in, in such an ecosystem, Padmaja, what are the kind of opportunities you see for women, particularly? I think I think uh, two three things. Uh, I think this is this is like I say it's a challenge, but it's also a great great opportunity. So what I see, uh, number one, I think this disruption is going to make us just dump hierarchy. Reduce could be a word, but according to me, hierarchy is going to take a beating as we know it, as we know it, it's going to take a beating. And collaboration and working across fields in a very proactive manner, yeah, with technology will be the game, yeah. Today, the biggest problem in the industry is not, not knowing technology alone, yeah. It's also trying to make your silo the biggest this mm -hmm. is what is 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 happening which we have to break we have to break this game and go across and this is what women play very very well yeah they mm -hmm. go pan uh, uh, verticals they can do it very very seamlessly so this is one thing yeah women have always struggled with hierarchies yeah, I won't go into the historical take on it, but uh, they've struggled with hierarchies. For them, this is a place to flourish. The moment hierarchies reduce, yeah, they just flower. And that's, I think, a very good opportunity. The second part is in mobility, it has been the, uh, the place where women could not flourish because of a lot of physical things that people had to do, right? like driving, your, your final testing, doing systems engineering. Now with software coming in in such a large way, I think everything is simulation and simulated world. And the whole boundary of physical coming into play has just disappeared. That's as big an opportunity for women worldwide as it is for India or for rest of the rest of the world other than the western world which was very very used to knowing cars as we say it right so that's a great opportunity as well and the third and the biggest thing that i think is the biggest king today or king maker will be user experience mm -hmm. yeah? yeah and i think this is the most underestimated undermined part of mobility mm -hmm. yeah be it be it in the car that's what you see it as a user but there is a whole lot of user experience in engineering it yeah in mm -hmm. architecting the whole thing sure 
yeah and this is something that women do very very intuitively they they don't need to i'm just waiting and watching if women will start to flourish but that's a great opportunity for me wonderful wonderful padmaja i mean let's get your personal perspective now i mean how did you get into the automotive domain and also give us an insight into your leadership journey really yeah automobile is just a second home to me i was always a tomboy growing up uh, i loved anything that looked like a bicycle from the time i know repairing things was my hobby and then at the age of i think 16 15 without a license i think i got onto a motorcycle and uh, i think that was life for me whether repairing driving everything was was uh, my hobby so and then came the cars right and uh, uh, it was it was just a world of my hobby that became a job and so for me that's mobility and that's that's how uh, it uh, panned out so i just think that i'm one of those fortunate ones for whom uh, a hobby is a job so for me that's that's how i say it yeah uh, leadership i think it was it was always from uh, leadership somehow just happened is what i will say the gangshu right okay. if you never train for it you never you just do the things you do and it comes right so one of the things that i say is that that uh, one thing that came naturally to me was uh, if there is a cause to run behind it mm. yeah so tom boys uh, 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 yeah uh, would do these things and i did it too if there was a cause run behind it so one of the things that became ingrained was purpose i think that today uh, today we we call it purpose mm -hmm. right so that that was uh, one very important thing as i started and i taught myself the art and craft of engineering i think uh, the the part i fell in love with with engineering was not that you especially with germany right when i went to germany the first time i think what i saw was it was not what they do that was different it was how they do that was different mm -hmm. yeah how they go after the whole thing how they go so methodically every little corner matters yeah and you have to make it matter mm -hmm. so that's the sec same thing i think uh, became that make the how matter in a product right that was the that was the second uh, dot uh, that i learned mm -hmm. and uh, life doesn't come easy if you want to go after a purpose and uh, you make how matter because speed is something you compromise on the way and when you compromise speed none of your bosses are happy so <laughs> taking battles fighting these mm -hmm. battles it, it was was one thing where i learned my third uh, thing and that was to prioritize my battles i suppose okay yeah so okay. Uh, so prioritization and so these are the three things that i still think are a part that have become me or that have aided me as uh, as a part of the leadership journey uh, and uh, I, i think i rely on them uh, very easily people are something that i loved i i'm a people person i just enjoy being with people there is no body needing to push me to meet people i just love people so uh, I, people just happens to be something which comes naturally yeah and uh, we lived in townships we mm. we were always the whole township was our family mm. so i think i think people just happen naturally but the rest of it was a part of the journey wonderful uh, patmaj i mean this clearly sort of uh, designed the approach towards leadership in your career absolutely absolutely i think i think one more thing that happened in in prioritization was that that when you were fighting your battles you realized decision making mm -hmm. right that's another part specifically when you are in 
areas like Germany or Japan, I think it's blown out uh, where you see it so clearly that people discuss, 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 discuss for the best possible option without a decision, mm. right? And, and, and that's what was the next one that added with all the battles and all of that. I think decision came somewhere along. But these were fundamentally the, uh, the parts and how it happened. All right. Now, now, what is leadership to you? Is it a skill, an ability, or a trait? Or do you think it's, a, it's sort of a combination of all of these coming together? Of course, I think it's a combination. Uh -huh. It's a combination of this. I think, I think very highly overplayed is the trait hmm. and underplayed is the skill. Skill. Yeah. And okay. uh, I think there needs to be a balance of all the three. And leadership is not something which, is, uh, which can be done by not working on it. You've got to learn every day. So the fundamental ethos of learning on a daily basis, yeah, without that, I think there is no leadership. So according to me, it's a mix of these three things. Okay, so Padmaja, the next question is really, you know, what defines uh, decisive leadership for you? What are the areas you think leaders should focus on considering the transformation that we see in the industry today? I think uh, I will start with the leadership focus part of it. I think leaders have to focus on really learning and learning the basics right. Yeah, because, because the whole technology has shifted the entire paradigm. So when you talk of a new world, I think there has never been a newer world than what we will see. It. What we have engineered, we did well. Mm. What we have to do is absolutely different. Yeah, this was more physical physics based systems and this is an entirely probabilistic way of thinking. Yeah. So your entire way of thinking has to alter. Yeah, and that is something that is the fundamental thing that mobility guys have to start relooking. That's the most important thing. Now, if you ask me about dec decisiveness, I think we need to call it out loud. Mm. Yeah, we need to call it out loud that, hey, guys, get on with it or vacate your place. We are not calling it out loud. Right. Yeah. In the large mobility corporates, we are still believing that we can carry forward with the same leaders mm. and get on because you are inhibiting a whole of transformation if you are not calling it out loud. Yeah. So decisiveness is about calling it out loud and taking actions and acting on it. Yeah. Voicing is one part. Thinking is the first part. Voicing is the next part and acting. Uh, I think this was so lovely uh, put by this Barbadian uh, prime minister, right? And the COP, she, she really put it very well. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I'm just paraphrasing her and using it here, but I think I think this is something we need to do as a part of a decisive leadership. Uh, so uh, when we look at the entire uh, industry uh, today, Padmaja, how can you uh, bring more women into the workforce? What is it that we as an industry really need to do to encourage more women to get into the automotive and the mobility segment? I think I think uh, uh, for women to come in more, I think there are two things that we need to, or maybe maybe three things that I always call out. Right, uh, number one is uh, women themselves and actually working out on uh, working on the women to open them up, uh, to kill the old stories. And that's, that's one pillar maybe, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Keeping them in the workforce, motherhood means blah, blah, blah. Uh, maternity means blah, blah, blah. You know, changing those models is one pillar. Sure. I think the second one is support systems. Uh, one of the plus points that has happened is this work from home. I think we need to increase phenomenal amount of support systems. Mm. I think support systems are something which are the most underdone things, right? The third one is playing the role models. 
Okay. I think these would be uh, uh, the three three pillars. I think the first one where working with women is concerned, I think what we are doing right now is we are working on the numbers part of it, in taking a lot of women, etc. But I think we need to start getting coaching to women at a very much lower level than we have in corporate organizations. Mm -hmm. We start them when they come to leadership. We mm -hmm. need to start them when a woman gets into the phase where she's thinking of maternity and mm -hmm. she has ideas about it, right? Mm -hmm. They are fixed ideas. That is something where we need to enter and start working with them. Yeah. Okay. And I don't think we are asking the women, what support do you need? We are assuming mm. as if we are gods. We are just assuming what support systems we need. I think there, there is a lot of discussion with women and the ability of corporates to tailor it for the women. Yeah. I think yeah. that needs to uh, alter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the third one is playing the role models up. Mm. We have very hackneyed ideas about role models. Yeah. And I think role modeling can be done in a very diverse way. You know, at every level, you, you put a role model at a CEO, the glass ceiling question. I mean, that's okay. That's mm. a role model. Mm. Right. Why do we imagine that the only life is becoming a CEO of an organization? Right. Yeah. Right. So I seriously believe that in this world where hierarchies are taking a complete toss, I think we need to play out role models at various levels, mm -hmm. really, really diverse role models. Yeah. And that will be what will be the three things that we could support women with and bring in more women into the work. So yeah. I think that would be very, very good. Very well said, uh, Padmacha. Now, my final question today would be, if you have a message for young women looking at making a career in this industry, what would that be? I think, I think uh, the simple thing that I repeat every time I see a group of young women is that, that don't think that there is only one way to build a career, right? Career is yours defined by you don't go by the, yes role models are phenomenally good take that as a beacon that stands in front of you right uh, uh, imitate it if you please yeah but make it your journey yeah spend your time in finding ways to get there there's not a single way there are multiple ways to go to that same point right yeah, and keep trying, keep trying, keep mm -hmm. trying. The one additional point I will say to women is women naturally try to shun the whole game of learning in technology. That would be one advice in today's world for the next five years and then on maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can see only the next five years. So I will say they need to go after learning technology. I mean, that is one thing I would advise. If you don't go after technology and play the old woman of only soft skills and uh, highlight only that without working on technology, I don't think you will have a balance. It won't work. It won't work. So these are the two advices. Take your own path, build, search for your own path, and don't ignore technology. Strength of soft skills and strength of collaboration hierarchies, all of that is yours but work on technology. On that note, Parvajal, thank you so much for speaking to Mobility Outlook. It is a pleasure having you uh, in this program uh, we call Women in Mobility. Truly appreciate your time, taking time uh, of your schedule. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.